Okay, so last time we talked about uh, conservation principles through two examples, one in which uh, the conserved quantity was the sum of the four positions of the, the four coins, the other in which the area of the figure formed by those points was the conserved quantity. So, we will talk about a few more examples this time. So, let us do the following, uh, let us again talk about examples on the plane. So, what is our initial configuration going to be? So, let us now take three points which form let us say a right angle triangle. So, here are three points. A, B, C. So, those are my initial point. So, my configurations here are triples of points like this A, B, C and in this case the initial configuration is where they form a right triangle and of course, now we need to give the evolution rules. How do uh, you know how, how does the system change with time? So, how do the positions of these three points change with time? Well, here is what you are allowed to do. So, what are the allowed moves at each time? You can apply any one of the following can apply any one of the following transformations. You can apply a translation, you can apply a reflection, a rotation or a dilation. So, these are examples of transformations we talked about. So, by dilation I mean a uniform dilation. Okay. So, these are the four operations or allowed moves that you can perform. So, you can translate this triangle, you can reflect it about any line, you can rotate the triangle or you can dilate the entire triangle. Okay. So, and you can at each time you pick any one of these four operations and you perform it, that is the idea. Now, here is the question, is it possible that at some point of time t that you land up with an equilateral triangle. So, the question is can this system reach the following configuration, one in which the three points lie on the vertices of an equilateral triangle. Okay, so, imagine this is an equilateral triangle. Okay. So, that is the question, can it somehow reach this configuration. Okay. So, again the, the attempt to answer such question lies in trying to find something that is conserved during the evolution, something that does not change and in this case it is easy to answer because we have of course, studied these in depth. Here is what we know, uh, a translation or a reflection or a rotation gives you a congruent triangle, right? it does not change lengths or angles. So, what you get is just a congruent triangle whereas, dilation, so uniform dilation will not preserve lengths, but it will certainly preserve angles. So, it will give you a similar triangle. So, that is something we looked at. So, another way of stating this is you keep track of the three angles of this triangle. The three angles, the list of the three angles is conserved. So, how, how should we, so if C denotes a configuration, so here the configuration is just the three points, the three vertices of the triangle. What is a gamma function if you wish? the gamma function can just be the list of the three angles. So, this is just uh, the angles at the points A, B, C. Okay. So, here the conserved quantity is not just one quantity if you wish, but rather a list of the three angles, but nevertheless observe that uh, the evolution rule conserves gamma. So, observe that gamma is in fact conserved during the evolution. <clears throat> in other words, no matter which of these moves you apply, what you will get will be a triangle which has the same three angles. Okay. So, it will continue to remain a right angle triangle throughout in which the top angle of course, is also equal to whatever this is. So, it will if the three angles are 90 degrees alpha and beta, the same thing will continue to hold for every triangle that you get during the evolution. Okay, so, you cannot get an equilateral triangle, that is basically the, the conclusion here. Okay. But the key point is really in figuring out what the conserved quantity is, which in this case is for instance the three angles. Now, here is another example, where we will not look at all the, the transformations we wrote out, but only about rotation. So, let us only look at rotations. So, again here uh, the same thing, so what is the initial configuration here? Here, instead of taking a triangle, let me just say initial configuration is just some point. Okay. 
Okay, so, I have a point on the plane that is my, so the coordinates x and y, we call it x naught, y naught. This is the initial configuration. Okay, my system consists of just the point and I should tell you how the system evolves. So, how, how do I transform it at each instant of time? Well, I apply a rotation to it. Okay. So, what is the allowed move? is you take this point and you rotate it through some angle theta. So, rotate it meaning you join it to the, the origin and then you rotate this by an angle theta. Okay. And doing that will give you another point that is the new configuration of the system. And similarly, at the next instant of time you again pick some random angle theta and you rotate this by the angle theta. What you get is again a, a, a new configuration. Okay. So, in this case just from this geometrical description of the system here is what the system typically goes through. It starts out at this point, maybe you rotate it through a certain angle and then at the next instant you rotate it by some other angle and so on. So, it keeps sort of moving around on the circle, occupies various positions depending on what angle theta was picked at that time instant. Okay. So, that is the evolution of the system and now here is the question, uh, what is the conserved quantity? So, of course, remember uh, rotations, you know, uh, they certainly do conserve areas and things like that, but uh, more importantly, they preserve lengths. So, here, uh, so what is an allowed move? So, let me just write that out. Uh, an allowed move is you are allowed to apply the rotation, let us give the rotation, it is a linear transformation by the angle theta. So, what rotation? Uh, are you allowed to apply? So, r theta has the following formula. So, it is something for you to check. This is just cosine theta times x minus sin theta times y comma cosine ah, sin theta x plus cosine theta y. So, what you are allowed to do at each instant of time is to pick an angle theta and apply this transformation to the point x y. Okay, thereby obtaining another point x y. Of course, it is much easier without the formula, it is easier uh, just geometrically to see what you are doing is just moving it to uh, a point which is rotated by an angle theta. Okay, so, you apply a rotation. So, now here is what is the conserved quantity. So, let us define the function gamma for a configuration. So, what is the configuration here? It is just the coordinates of the point. Okay, so, the configuration c just denotes the point you have and we will define the gamma function to be the length or the square of the length. Okay, so, let us define the gamma function to just be the length function if you wish and the key thing here is that rotation preserves lengths. Okay, so, observe that gamma is conserved under the, the evolution, is conserved as the system evolves. And why is that? Well, because if you wish, you can just uh, actually check this by calling this as x prime and that as y prime. So, let us just write this out one step. I will just leave the verification to you. Uh, call the x coordinate as x prime. So, this is just sort of a verification from the formula. As I said, geometrically, it is pretty clear that the length is preserved sin theta x plus cosine theta y. So, that is the new position or the new configuration of the system and now if you just compute x prime squared plus y prime squared, you will find that the identity cos square plus sin square is 1 will help you prove that x prime squared plus y prime squared is 1 is equal to sorry x squared plus y squared. Okay, so, check this. So, here is a conserved quantity. So, for instance, this in particular proves that if as the system evolves, if you start out with a point at a distance 5 from the origin, the system can never reach a state where that point is now at a distance 10 from the origin. Okay. You are constrained to stay within the, uh, the distance 5 from the origin. So, those are the only possible configurations that you can reach. And here is a, a minor tweak of this example that I will leave for you to try. So, uh, this also involves the so called hyperbolic functions. So, let me just recall 
what are called the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic sine. So, in case it is not already familiar, so cosine hyperbolic of u, so u is any real number here, is defined to be the following e power u plus e to the minus u divided by 2 and sine hyperbolic, so hyperbolic sine is defined as e to the u minus e to the minus u divided by 2. Okay. So, there is a, a hyperbolic version of the previous example. Okay. So, there we said the configuration, so now here is the, the, the system I want to study. My configuration again is just a single point. So, I for instance I start out at some point x naught y naught and now how do I evolve the system? So, what, what do I allow? So, here is the allowed move. You are allowed to apply the following transformation. So, at each time uh, apply a transformation let us call it T u for some value of u. Okay, so, you pick u, you pick a real number u just as in the earlier example, uh, you know what is the allowed move? You pick an angle theta and then you rotate by the angle theta, okay, you apply the transformation which is rotation by theta. Similarly, here you pick a real number u and then you apply the, the transformation T u which I have just described. So, pick a real number u and apply the following transformation. So, what is this? Just like in the earlier case, here is the definition of T u, it takes the point x y to the following point cosine hyperbolic u times x plus sine hyperbolic u times y comma sine hyperbolic u x plus cosine hyperbolic u y. It is almost like the earlier one where we had cosine, minus sine, sine and cos. Here it is just cosine hyperbolic, sine hyperbolic, sine hyperbolic, cosine hyperbolic. Okay. So, this is the allowed transformation. Okay. So, at this point we do not yet have a very geometrical idea of what this does. Okay. So, it is not like a rotation or any such thing, okay. it is somewhat different. Now, again the question is really the following, can you find a conserved quantity for this evolution? So, here is the thing that I would like you to check. So, here is the conserved quantity. So, what is the configuration? To, as I said, it is just the point, coordinates of the point, and define gamma of c in this case to be x squared minus y squared. Okay. And prove that, so check. So, this part is the exercise. Check that gamma is conserved. And how do you do this? You have to do pretty much the same calculation we did earlier. You call this as x prime and y prime. The two, so these become the new coordinates of the the new configuration of the system. And you will have to check that for this new x prime and y prime, the difference x prime squared minus y prime squared, however, remains the same as the old difference. Just like we checked for the cosine and sine case, that the sum of the squares remains constant here after applying to u, you get a new x prime y prime whose difference of the squares remains a constant. Okay. So, what does this really mean? It says the following geometrically that suppose the original system, the, the, the initial configuration, suppose you were at the point 1 comma 0, then the gamma function corresponding to your initial configuration is just 1 squared minus 0 squared. Okay. So, you are at the gamma function is a 1 in this case. And what it says is as the system evolves, the gamma function cannot change. So, no matter what your new point is x prime comma y prime, the difference of the squares had better be a 1. Okay. So, x prime squared minus y prime squared in this case must remain a 1 because that is what it was at the initial point of time. So, what this means is, so observe this is the equation of, of a rectangular hyperbola, so which sort of looks like this is also another branch on the other side. Now, this hyperbola here is the constraint, meaning the point, the configuration of the system is constrained such that it can only lie on this particular hyperbola, it cannot move anywhere else, you cannot get other arbitrary points on the plane, you are always constrained to only lie on this hyperbola. Okay. So, at each time it can give you a hyperbola. 
Similarly, in the earlier example, what was the corresponding thing in the earlier example? That was a circle. So, if your initial point is 1 comma 0 in the previous example, then at each time t you are constrained to lie on the circle of radius 1. You cannot move out of this circle. Okay. Similarly, in this case you cannot move out of the hyperbola. Okay. So, these are all examples of uh, conservation principles in what you might call discrete systems, meaning I am not thinking of time as being a continuous variable, I am only doing something at time t equal to 0, t equal to 1, t equal to 2 and so on. Now, the, the conservation laws that you are likely to have heard of before in the context of physics, classical mechanics especially are there of course, time is a continuous variable. right? So, you imagine that time varies continuously and as t varies there is a system with varies continuously with time, but no matter how it varies there are some quantities which are conserved. Okay? So, let me just make some brief remarks about conservation principles in the in the context of classical mechanics. So, here is the various conservation laws that you might have seen especially for instance the law of conservation of momentum. So, this is in fact an instance of the, the sorts of conservation principles we are talking about. So, we this is often called the law of conservation of momentum. So, again what is the setup there? You have a system. So, it is uh, it's a system classical mechanics it could have a bunch of particles and so on, but there is of course, one important restriction here that the system is not being acted upon by external forces. So, system not subject to external forces. And system is probably in some initial configuration. So, there are you know various particles moving at in various plate you know along various directions. So, they have various momenta for instance. So, this could be the, the, the picture of the system. Now, the particles themselves are interacting. So, there are so how, how does the system evolve with time? The evolution is according to well the laws of classical mechanics if you wish. So, the evolution is according to so what are the rules for evolution? So, in our case we wrote them out as certain allowed moves, we said okay, these are the things you can do to change the state of the system. Now, in the case of classical mechanics, the, the laws of mechanics or uh, if for instance, if you wish Newton's laws, which are essentially some differential equations. So, the evolution is by certain laws of mechanics, for instance, Newton's laws. But what are these? You know, just uh, written out mathematically. Well, these are actually certain differential equations. Okay. So these differential equations tell you how the system changes with time. Okay. So they they'll be given by say the derivative of uh, the momentum is you know the force and so on. So there are some rules which tell you. Uh, what the trajectories are that these particles take and there are rules for how they interact and so on. So, these differential equations govern the, the, the evolution of the system. Now, here the conserved quantity is something which has the following property that you know no matter what the differential equation tells you happens to the system, the, the momentum, the total momentum of the system can never change. So, the form of the differential equations is such that even though the system changes with time t, the total momentum cannot change. Okay. So, at the end of the day the conserved quantity very much depends on what the rules for evolution are. Right? That is the thing that we have seen throughout. In the very first example, the evolution rule was something special. You had you know what we looked at last time, a couple of uh, coins picked out and moved equally and you know moved by the same amount in opposite directions. That very special form of the evolution rule guaranteed that the total sum of the positions would remain constant. Similarly, if in the case where we had uh, 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 transformations allowed tra certain allowed transformations of the plane, the only allowed transformations were all things which had determinant 1 or at least uh, absolute value of determinant 1. So, the total area was conserved. Okay. So, the fact that you had a very special restricted set of evolution rules is what guarantees or is what allowed us to find certain nice conserved quantities. 
Now, similarly here the rules of classical mechanics or the differential equations have this very nice form uh, assuming there are no external forces this sort of guarantees that you know things like momentum or in other contexts the, the law of conservation of energy and so on. So, these rules guarantee the existence of certain conserved quantities that is sort of the broad moral of this story. Okay, so, we will we'll talk about matrices and other things next time.